everybody. Today it's a lovely sunny day here in UK and there's this place called Durham uh, near where I stay and it was also recommended by a very dear friend of mine. So I thought that probably I would give it a visit. Uh, there's this Durham castle right here and I've booked the tour of Durham castle. So let me just go inside and see how it is so i came from that side it was a little climb up and this is a castle and this is a park in front of it really good place to bask in the sunlight beautiful sun today it's not a really big castle There's a flag post on top of it. Uh, all the castles here in UK have a flag post. So I think till now you must have come to know that I'm a big sucker for sunlight, especially uh, ever since I've moved here in UK. Uh, it is one thing that I really look forward to a great sunny day and whenever there is sun I just cannot sit at my home I have to go out roam around somewhere make some vitamin D so I hope today would be a great day a great outing at the Durham castle and I'm now right in front of it let me just go inside That is the main entrance and exit to the Durham Castle. That's the Durham Cathedral. It's the shrine of Saint Cuthbert. I just shown you a glimpse of the Durham Cathedral and now I am going to Durham Castle that right in front of me with the flag on its roof is the Durham Castle as I told you before all the castles they have a flag over them It's a 14th century shell, so it was, um, yeah, it was updated from the original stone and uh, the original wooden square keep, and made to be stone and octagonal, and that was for defensive purposes. It was harder to break into, and it also gave a full 360 degree view of the city, so you would know if you were being attacked. Um, it can kind of be seen from all over Durham, which means that I'm quite jealous of all of the students who live there because they've got a very pretty view. Um, but yeah, we won't be going in because it's just stairs and then bedrooms and then toilets and it's just not very entertaining. Um, yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of the, a lot of the places are allocated strictly for students. Anywhere you look that you can see curtains, it's a bedroom. Built by Prince Bishop Tunstall, um, but the kind of stained glass window, that part was added by Prince Bishop Cousin. Um, so Cousin really made it look bigger and better and fancier. Um, not much of it has been architecturally changed for the students externally, but you can see that internally as we go around that uh, we've had to do some uh, some.
they do, however, indicate how wide the walls are. So it's between two and three meters thick. Um, and that was for defensive purposes. So it's a very strong defensive wall, um, as that's the external wall of the castle. Um, beyond that, there's moat siding, and then it just kind of drops off into the pit. Is, um, this is the, one of the oldest and best preserved arches in the country. So one of the reasons it's so well preserved is because uh, it was plastered over. Uh, we don't really know why anyone would want to plaster over such a beautiful arch, but we're quite glad that they did, because it means that we can now appreciate um, what it would have looked like. So it was plastered over around about the 16th to the 18th century. Um, and it, um, yeah, it, was, um, it would have been probably plastered off over after this room was built. So this room is actually a lean to. So this is on the external wall of the castle. So this is the external um, what the, what, where the castle originally ended. Um, and the arch was the Norman front wall. So they wanted it very dramatic. a lot architecturally and functionally, much like the rest of the castle. Um, in the 13th century, it was, um, it was about this length, but it was shorter. Um, and then in the 14th century, it was raised by 9 metres and also extended by 9 metres. Um, yeah, Prince Bishop Hatfield wanted something a bit more dramatic. Um, however, it was found to be too expensive to heat. They only had that fireplace in that corner. Um, and so they had to shorten it by that was the 15th century addition by Prince Bishop Fox. With the extra space, he made a buttery and a pantry, which is very much the same. Uh, we don't really have much use for a pantry and a buttery these days, so we've instead turned it into a library and also some other things for the students. Um, there's some decorations, well, some, some portraits on this wall. Um, there are people who are important to the castle and to the college. So in Pride so he had a role that's quite similar to the Vice Chancellor today. He did the day-to-day -day runnings of the castle and he kept records of students. Students had a curfew. They had to be in by 10 p.m. before the gates were locked. And if they were out later than that, they had to ring a bell and then they would be let in. And their names would be written down and the next day they would have to explain to this formidable figure what they've been doing. Um, yeah, Reverend and Doctor feels like a bit of a double barrel kind of title. Um, I don't know if he was out later than 10 p.m. Um, yeah, he was the first graduate back in the 1840s, 1842. Um, yeah, back then they could only study theology, engineering, and natural sciences. So since uh, Durham Castle is the part of a university, here's the kitchen where students can eat. And this is where the students can eat. giving a lot like the feeling of being in Hogwarts. 
So that was the tour of Durham Castle. I hope you enjoyed it. The best part about it is that uh, the owner of Durham Castle, Prince Philip, he uh, donated the castle to Durham University and students still live here and study there. It's quite nice. So I'll end my vlog on Durham Castle here. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel let me know in comments if you like the video and also how I can improve my videos just let me know take care bye bye